What does social do for Nestle on your brands that you're not necessarily getting from your other traditional marketing vehicles? The first thing we did was bring social um, community management in-house. It no longer sits with our agencies. And so we can move a lot faster. We spend the most with Google and Facebook. Those are like where our first couple dollars are spent and not to, not to forget search because the first digital sure. dollar is always spent in search. Pinterest is coming out with a lot of different interesting ad offerings now uh -huh. that brands can really take advantage of. For Snap, like Pinterest, they were a little bit newer to the measurement game. Now that they've opened up the APIs of Q4 mm -hmm. last year, um, we can do a lot more. As VP of Marketing for Vizio, tell me a little bit about your content creation. It's changed a lot in the last few years. As a TV company, it's changed because the patterns of content consumption have changed. That said, when we look at all the different audiences, we do look for commonalities between them. And so we really spend a lot of time understanding the psychographics of who wants to buy a TV and for what purpose. And we try to find those common threads so that we can produce the content that's going to be applicable to different folks. There are different messages um, and different ways that we can promote our content on social that's actually become very effective in helping folks who are in market and we can really understand them and we have great data to understand where they're at in that journey and be able to help push them over the edge to to go by. Scaling our influencer marketing program is what helps us the most. We have found that using the big influencers with that big blast is what really triggers conversation. And then the micro influencers with their own spheres of reach are helping us really sustain that conversation. We've built these amazing relationships with people like micro influencers that are willing to come to us or even in their own time are just creating content at Jack in the Box because they love our brand. They have a visual style. Uh, but moreover, they really fit with our brand's verticals. For me, yes, collection of big influencers, but also people that are producing beautiful content for our brand at all times. Uh, and to me, that's not just an influencer anymore, right? They are now an advocate for your brand. Tell me why you think influencer marketing is so effective. Well, for us, especially in print, uh, we had a real task about a year ago, which was how can we really make a, a whole market that is somewhat irrelevant to a very digital first audience. How can we make print relevant to them, fun for them? When you're talking about printing at home, it seems kind of outdated. We first kicked off with a six month campaign where uh, during that time we had a few evergreen creators that were gonna be with us just through the whole, uh, the whole thing. And those were uh, definitely over a million, uh, but less than 10 million in, in all of them. And uh, then we had a series of smaller audience creators that had really high engagement. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. so we tried to have a, a nice mix. Initially, we had just metrics around reach and sentiment and could we get people talking about it? Could we get people to think it was cool even? Um, could we get people excited and engaged? How is our influencer content performing versus our paid and owned? Mm -hmm. And I have a hypothesis right now that I'm pretty sure is accurate that uh, our influencer content end to end is performing better even when we look at our total spend. Tell us a little bit how you're using influencer marketing as a complement to your overall campaigns. Uh, I would say that influencer marketing has to do with basically almost every single one of my clients that I have right now. It's a also a perception for clients as well, some agencies too, to not focus on, oh, they have 10 million subscribers and I can pay this much money for 10 million subscribers or I can get 100 so different um, influencers that have 30 to 50,000 subscribers mm -hmm. and get so much more deeper engagement right. and also not trying to screw around with the brand integrity of what the influencer that you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. There's no reason of why I should be placing a product or have them talk about something that should not, is not in their normal vernacular. Let's fast forward one year and then two years and tell me what influencer marketing looks like. I think it will continue to grow tremendously, right? As, as people come up, in the digital atmosphere, they won't come up per se as YouTube stars. They will come up, you know, via Snap and via Instagram and via platforms we don't even know exist yet. There will continue to be macro influencers, right? And they will function more like traditional celebrity like they do mm -hmm. now. The other folks will have access to different technologies and different platforms. Do you think it's driving the needle in terms of sales? You know, certainly some very direct to consumer products, it works well, like Khloe Kardashian using Fit T. All, you know, all of a sudden fit tees get, you know, sales right. go through there the roof or Chrissy Teigen or right. whatever, right? Consideration to me in this day and age is probably the most fundamental and critical thing for a brand to have. Once you're considered, then you have the opportunity to be purchased. The future is actually probably in how we standardize the measurement of the impact 
that these folks have, right? The, the actual return on investment for the money that you spend that is quantifiable. For influencers, you know, the sky's the limit. The key is, if you want to be very successful, you have to consider yourself as a brand.